we'll move to the next uh, session. We'll, we'll, we'll try to move uh, quickly. So we'll start with a lightning talk by Lena Chacha, who is uh, working with us in the lab. Lena is our lab manager. Lena. Good afternoon, everyone. I have a sleepy room. Everyone is asleep. Good afternoon, everyone. I have all this energy and you're dull. Good afternoon, everyone. Great. Okay, so I'm waiting for my slides to come up. Uh, so thank you for, so much. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you about building cybersecurity capacity at scale. And more particularly, from a case study, which is lessons learned from running the first Africa high school cybersecurity competition. So most of us seated here have all learned about cybersecurity, either through formal education, universities, uh, through hackathons, or through experience at work. And then there's a team at the back that has been experienced cybersecurity through hackers, right? Now, cybersecurity has a pipeline problem that we cannot introduce cybersecurity at a stage X that is very definite. We need to do that in a whole pipeline by introducing cybersecurity to high school teachers, students, technical colleges, minority groups, and perhaps people who don't even get the chance to go through formal education. So the opportunity we have at Scilab Africa is uh, through Pico CTF, which was first built by Scilab in the US, which is a free computer security uh, education program that is built upon a capture the flag framework. So I'll give you a preview of how the platform actually looks like. So that is an example of how a challenge looks like. So at the very top, I will have a category, which is information. Then it's assigned about 10 points. And then you will see there, uh, this, there's a description, and then there's cut.jpg. So that is the file that a student would normally download, work on it on their local machine, and then once they capture a secret that is embedded in this file, they'll come back and download and, and update it here. This is great, because then if we have an internet problem in Africa, they can go work offline, come back, and upload this. So this, this, is, a, this is good. We have a few, this is borrowing from what has been done in the US, uh, success stories. We see here a few tweets saying that there are some high school teachers who have adopted the platform to introduce a cyber program among their students. And there are some students who have actually done it for the first time and they've decided that this is the path that I want to, to go. So I'll be taking you through a journey of how the preparation, what, to, what it takes to actually run the first CTF in Africa. And then I will give you some statistics and next steps. Now, this is a very, you know, it's very pictorial. So when we started running the CTF, we went and to Facebook. I'm on Facebook. I'm not on Twitter. I'm not on TikTok. <laughs> Problem. So we decided that we are going to go on social media. It wasn't long before we realized that we were not getting the right age group. We were not even getting high school students because in most of our countries, high schools are not even allowed to have gadgets, right? Then uh, we also realized that Facebook might not been, have been the place we should be use Twitter or I also signed up for an Instagram account. And then, uh, so we had a few lessons which we had to go through and we realized this is the best model. That in, uh, actually, this is uh, pictures from Rwanda. We need to go to the schools, sit with them, and the first thing we need to do is that they are so afraid of getting into technology and engineering, what about cybersecurity? So we started from simple examples of when you left home to come to school. Did you lock your phone or you left it with your mom with the password? You can get what was the answer was. They locked it and shut it down. Uh, so the basic topics, apart from what I've said, is basic programming, web security, forensics, binary exploitations, and the other topics you can see. So looking at statistics, we had 58% uh, of African countries participated, uh, most of them from East Africa and West Africa. And in terms of percentage of participation, uh, we have the highest number in East Africa from West Africa. Now, there is a very big correlation between the percentages that you're seeing here and the regions. 
and the kind of support that we had in these countries. Now, in East Africa and West Africa, we either had in-person trainings or dedicated trainings. I mentioned the example of uh, USIU Nairobi, who said we want a training just for us. And I remember we did it at 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. with their students. The second correlation is that these countries actually announced country-level awards. They said, you know, there's a probability that we are not going to win this, so let us encourage our students. And then we have a gender problem. Total PICO CTF out of 18,000, 12%. Africa out of 1,000 students, 20%. All teams in Africa, 414, 17, 76%, no woman on the, te on the team. A fast 100% teams, 35%, no woman. We have a problem, guys. I, I, I'm tempted to count the number of ladies in this room. I won't. <laughs> Now, what, then we ask them, how has, the, how has this competition improved your perception or changed your perception to cybersecurity? Now, I'm going to present only 90s. 95% increase in cybersecurity. 97, hands-on cybersecurity skills. Independent learning ability, very important, that after the competition, they can move forward alone. Knowledge of other competitions and material for cybersecurity. Now, what uh, the targets, we want 80%. We want an increase in women. We want to interact directly with the teachers because they are the first point of contact with the students and they're direct mentors to the students. And then they give us access to their computer labs. We had a special case in West Africa where the students did not have laptops. How, so we are like, can you run this challenge? Is it running? And they say, oh, ma excuse me, ma, I'm on my phone. Then we want to provide certificates that can be used in the region, appeal to those who have no prior knowledge, recordings, and include marginalized groups, which is refugees and people living with disability. How can you help us? Please announce country level awards to encourage students. This can be in form of cash prizes, certification, and remember the theme is to increase cybersecurity, so certification is a great way to go. Uh, we need to get involved with the education board. We are in, the, with the, in touch with the education board in Rwanda, and they are very eager to do this. Funding of the program, a lot of work goes into this. There's development of the challenge, there's awareness, and also actually the prizes that we announce. Now, key takeaways. We're having a pipeline problem. Pico CTF is a great opportunity. We run the first Africa cybersecurity CTF, but we need your help. Thank you.